okay, if I told you right now, like you have to take six months off from pole vault, we don't know if you'll come back or if you won't, like, how does that make you feel? And I had a panic attack and I started like feeling like my chest was tightening and I was like, I can't stop. Like, I just can't stop. And she was like, why? And I was like, I don't know. And it honestly felt like an addiction, something I've just been doing for so long. Like, I can't stop. Like, what will happen? And then I saw her at the very end of March and I had this feeling that I knew that I wanted to have a break. And she's like, okay, close your eyes and just imagine telling, like, Daniel, your parents, your friends that, like, you're having a break and you don't know what it means. And I closed my eyes and I said it and my shoulders just, like, dropped. I just felt like this weight had lifted off my shoulders and I was like, that's it. Like, I know what I'm doing. Okay, Liz. Hello. Liz Parnov, athlete, Olympian, girlfriend. Yes. Mother of dogs. Yeah. <laughs> Creative <laughs> director these days as well. Well, like. yeah, something like that. How the fuck are you? I'm so good. How are you? Oh, you know, one day at a time. <laughs> <laughs> What's been going on lately? Oh, not much. Um, a few big life changes for myself. Um, I recently decided to take a break from pole vaulting for the rest of the year just to um, see what life has to offer away from sport and, you know, throw myself into work and life and just being normal whatever that is. Um, so yeah, I'm like in such a good place right now. I'm so happy and I'm just like so excited to like essentially start a new life. So that must be massive for you because yeah. like sport and pole vault in particular has been your life since you were a child, mm-hmm. right? Like when did you start? Oh, I honestly can't remember not doing it. So I started when I was seven because my older sister Vicky started and I kind of just got dragged along to the track and then... I reckon at about 10, I like was fully training. Like there was a weekly routine and yeah, since then that's all it's ever been. It's just been school training, uni training, work training. And did you love it or was it like, cause your family's obviously yeah. heavily You got a whole entrenched. family of, yeah. Um, yeah, like yeah. I was looking at your Wikipedia page before. <laughs> yeah. And um, which is funny to do that with someone you know. Yeah. But I was like, oh, I didn't know this. But yeah, you, no. yeah, you, you have a whole, going back to your grandmother. Yeah, so she won a bronze medal in the Mexico Olympics. Um, and then like all my family is in athletics, like not just pole vault, like all events. Um, and my dad was my coach for a really long time. And yeah, like I definitely loved it and I will always love it. But it's just like shifted a lot for me. What do you think, what do you think that is? Because like from the outside perspective, I was talking to Scott about this before. It's like, it must be so hard, like being, especially an Olympic athlete, because your entire life is really geared towards this one event. Mm. The one event that people really care about outside Mm -hmm. people. And it only happens once every four years. And as an athlete, so much can happen in those four years that can either derail you or injury or Mm. whatever. Um, and then potentially you don't perform or whatever mm-hmm. at, at, at that event. Like how, how difficult is it to, to deal with that pressure, I suppose, leading up to, to something like that? Yeah. Um, fuck knows. It's <laughs> like, I can't even describe it. It's just like the most hectic, like roller coaster of emotions all the time. And I just feel like you're constantly, like, like you said, with like injuries and then particularly with COVID recently, like there's just been so many like roadblocks and things that just like break your heart in the sport and derail you that I think I just got to the point where I was like, I'm just so tired of this. Like, I don't think I can just keep picking myself up, like for what it's worth, like, it just like got me down, 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 down to the point where I was like, this just isn't worth it. Like I want to be happy and I'm fucking miserable. So, yeah. And you felt you were defined by what you did. Yes. Like, like I saw that there's a really powerful Instagram post you did like mm. yesterday, I think. Mm-hmm. And it's like, having done that your whole life, I can imagine it's like, I am Liz, the pole vaulter. Yeah. And to now be experiencing or, or like exploring who am I without this? Mm. Because you are, I know you as Liz, the person, mm. like yeah. completely. And I see you on TV yeah. sometimes and I'm like, that's fucking crazy, that's Liz. But to, I suppose, your own self-image for so much of your life, you would have been like, mm. this is who I am, this is what I do. And it's the only thing you've known, yeah. which is a really strange 
thing. Yeah. It, it, it's really hard to describe to people because it's like it's one of those things where like because I grew up doing it and I didn't know any different it was honestly just like a daily habit like I just did it like I didn't think about what I was doing or why I was doing it for so long when I was young because I was just good at it so I just did it you know like it was fun I saw some friends like um got a lot of praise from my parents for it like you know all those things that like stimulate a child and then as I got older and like you have to deal with like setbacks and injuries and it becomes more like your decision as to why you're doing something I just began to question like why am I doing this like what is it that drives me what motivates me um and yeah well, it's a period of growth it's, like even asking yourself those questions yeah there's, this, there's a level of self-awareness that I've said this before on this podcast like I don't think I always thought that you chose to grow up where you'd mm. be like because you always feel like a child right yeah and then i was like um if i choose to grow up that's going to be some sort of choosing to kind of give up sort mm-hmm. of thing but your mind just your mind matures and you can't escape that mm-hmm. so like you probably weren't asking yourself that question five years no, ago but now you not. are and it's like there's no escaping that no and i think the biggest like turning point for me was about um i'd say like a year ago where like I had a really bad competition. It was just before, like, not just before the Olympics, but like in the season beforehand. And um, I was in such good shape and like the conditions were perfect. We were in Townsville and I jumped so bad. And I remember I was so upset. Like it was one of the last competitions before heading into the camp. Um, And And you'd you'd already qualified? Yeah, I'd qualified, but I put a lot of pressure on myself to perform well there to kind of like confirm that I was jumping well and I could perform well at the Olympics and I performed poorly and I was just like beside like howling crying like it was and I felt embarrassed I was like why the fuck am I so upset about this like no one's died like tomorrow will come like I've got two legs I've got two arms everyone loves me it's fine but I just like felt as though like if I didn't perform that like people wouldn't care for me and like I was letting everyone down and yeah it was just so horrible and that was the first time that I like reached out to my parents um and Daniel and my friends and I was just like what is going on like why is this affecting me so much and I started seeing a psychologist like very regularly and I think that was kind of the point where I started to question like who I am like pole vault as an identity and yeah like exploring that and like you said once you realize or like even think about that question you can't stop until you get the answer and so like it's just been a journey since then to kind of get to this point where I'm at now where I'm like so comfortable within myself but it's been fucking terrifying because it's it's like looking at all your deepest darkest like everything from like why you do this why you do that like how your parents affected you like how yeah just like peeling back the layers <laughs> it's so funny because you're like i know because i've been i've been through similar things of like yeah. the, the who i am who am i thing mm-hmm. you know at different levels and you're like oh i wish i was just like i was before and i wasn't thinking about this because mm. everything was so much easier it's like there's an ignorance that there's a bliss in that ignorance that yes. i miss so much but when you start to come out the other side of it which it sounds like you are now it's actually like a period of real growth and it's pretty exciting to see what you're going to do now. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there was, you're obviously in a good relationship with Daniel Mm -hmm. uh, Bradshaw, previous guest, one of our good friends. Yeah. And that being something that came, like that being obviously it's like a very serious relationship, but that came when you're already, Mm. you know, on track to be an Olympian, you're doing all of those things. And that person caring about you as Liz. Yeah. And knowing that, like, if you don't perform, he's still going to love you. You know, your parents are still going to love you. It's a pretty big flashing sign that, like, you don't need to do this for love. You don't need to do this. People are still going to like you if you don't do this. It's funny you say that because I didn't know if that was the case. Like, I was asking Daniel, my friends, my parents. I was like, if I, like, and... It was like shock. Now that I think back, I'm like, what was wrong with me? That like, that was how my brain was working. That I was like, 
I literally sat down with Daniel one night and I was having like a full meltdown and I was just like, I'm so scared if I stop pole vaulting, like you won't love me. And he was like, what the fuck are you talking about, mate? Like, I'm not going anywhere. And I knew that, but it's like I needed him to say it or like in my mind, I'd created this like illusion that like he got with me because I was an Olympian, because I was an athlete and I had this kind of like vibe or whatever about me. And same with my parents. I was like, if I stop, will you love me? And they were like, are you insane? Like, we don't care what you do. Like, don't do it. How are you supposed to think any other way though? You've been doing it since you're exactly. 10. So you're like, this is, it's a package deal. Like me and pole vaulting is a package deal. So if I take that away, what are you, are you you'd be like, are my parents going to be disappointed in yeah. me? Am I meant to win a fucking medal? Like am I, mm-hmm. you know, like, do you think that there, did you have aspirations for the current, you know, because obviously you potentially, you, you may go back to this and, and do all that yeah. stuff. You're just taking a year off. But did you have aspirations that you where you were like this is this is what I want and this is what I this is what I need to achieve in this sport Mm -hmm. or were you like I'm this is what I do and I'm going to do as as best as I can Um, it's definitely changed like over the years and towards I'd say like maybe the last five years I was always just like pole vaulting to like do the best that I physically could like I was always just trying to push myself and it was always a competition with myself um and like I know that I can do more physically, mentally, like I know I can jump higher, but I think another really crucial point in me making this decision was that I was like, I'm so content with everything I've done. Like, yeah, I can go to another Olympics, I can go to another Commonwealth Games, but I don't give a fuck because I've gone to two Olympics, I've gone to three Commonwealth Games, two World Championships, like I've done it all. I may not have the medal, but like, I'm so proud of all those achievements. No one can take any of that away from you. Exactly. And like, that was the biggest thing is like in this recent like prep, I was like, well, I'm so content. Like, what am I training for? Nothing. Like, I'm happy. And now you're looking for purpose. You know, you're looking for Mm. a new purpose. And it may, this shit may be the story where it's like, yeah, I took a year off and it was the best thing I ever did. And and, And now I'm back and I know what, you know, you realign and stuff. But I think you need to know that you want to do it. You need to Mm. be in love with it, you know? And it's definitely at that point where, like, I've just been in it for so long that, like, in order for me to have that clarity and, like, 100% decision, like, am I retiring or am I going back? Like, I need to completely remove myself. I need to, like, stop all the exercise I was doing, like, do something else. Like, I don't want to speak to anyone at waist. I don't want to, like, at all. Like, I need to just, like, completely be a different person and I think then I will know like how I truly feel within whether I miss it and I like yearn for it or if it's like if that's it you're so fucking you're so aware like you're so self-aware that's you're 27 yeah like that that's not normal like that level of self-awareness from conversations I've had Mm. with people you know like just to know who you are and be like I need to I need to figure this out because this isn't sustainable if you had have had this conversation with me in January I would have been a very different person like it's been an absolute road I've been having so much therapy like with so many people just trying to figure it out and the therapist I was seeing when I first saw her she was like okay if I told you right now like you have to take six months off from pole vault we don't know if you'll come back or if you won't like how does that make you feel and I had a panic attack and I started like feeling like my chest was tightening and I was like I can't stop Like, I just can't stop. And she was like, why? And I was like, I don't know. And it honestly felt like an addiction, something I've just been doing for so long. Like, I can't stop. Like, what will happen? And then I saw her at the very end of March and I had this feeling that I knew that I wanted to have a break. And she's like, okay, close your eyes and just imagine telling, like, Daniel, your parents, your friends that, like, you're having a break and you don't know what it means. And I closed my eyes and I said it and my shoulders just, like, dropped I just felt like this weight had lifted off my shoulders and I was like, that's it. Like, I know what I'm doing. And that was it. Like, it was insane that like that one question, four months apart is like completely different person. It's like almost allowing yourself to to put put yourself in that mindset. Because you started so young and you said like earlier, it was almost like you did it. It was a habit. Like you just did it because that's what you Mm -hmm. did. Do you remember a time where you loved it? Yeah. And do you remember when you stopped loving it? 
Yeah, okay. So I reckon I loved it from like 14 because I was like really good when I was young. Um, And so like I loved the clout and I was like the shit. And then I reckon when I broke my leg in 2016, that was like another pivoting point for me where I had to really reassess like can I be bothered starting from scratch and like do I want it and I really really wanted it and then I came back and I jumped really well and I'd say for that like 2018-19 I really loved it and then COVID my family moved back overseas like just a lot of little things that happened that I kind of compounded because I didn't have time to stop and address these things like I was training like I didn't have the mental capacity to deal with them um they just built up inside me to a point where like after Tokyo I was just like this is fucked like I can't keep going like I'm just so tired like physically mentally like it's crazy I watched that video of you when you broke your leg mm. and that took you out of the Olympic contention yeah so I was like getting it was April and I was like on track to go to Rio and yeah, I just had like a freak accident at training and broke my leg and that was that. It's so fucking unforgiving, eh? Like I it's know. like it's like honestly, you have more lows than highs. Like it's insane. And that's why it's addictive because like when you get that high, you're just like, "Oh my god, like I'm the king of the world." <laughs> and then like you have a shit run for 8 months and you're like, "What the fuck is going like why? Why am I doing this?" And, and then you get a good thing. If it's any other sport, you know, you break your leg in soccer. You take six to eight weeks, it heals, you come back. But in your sport, you break your leg, you miss the Olympics, you got yeah. four more years to wait. Yeah. And how much preparation to yeah. build up into that, that must be so deflating. Mm-hmm. I can definitely understand why you mm. bit off it. And it's not only that, like it's not only the injury, it's like everything else that goes with it, like you'll most likely get dropped from your shoe contract. So there's your salary gone. You'll probably lose like your funding. There's more money. Like there's so many other things that fall into it where like as an individual athlete, like if that happens, like you are in a bad place and like for you to get out of that, like you got to really want it. Whereas if you're in a team, it's like, oh no, you can just like sit on the bench and like we'll still pay you. So there's no support if you aren't, if you're not competing. No, my God, no. Jesus Christ. I haven't been, yeah, no. That's what? that's fucked. Like structurally, that's fucked. Yeah, like individual sport and like particularly athletics. Like there's, unless you're like a medal contender, like you're not getting a dime. Is that like internationally recognised? Like no. is the is it Australian Institute yeah. of Sport the one that's really? It's not- Australia. Like in the UK, I'm pretty sure they get like a, like they get like an allowance from like the governing body. And they get, like, housing and rent paid for and, like, stuff like that. Like, it's like a job. Yeah. It is. Like, you commit so much of your life. Whereas here, it's like, unless you're at the top, you don't get anything like, yeah, they'll pay for your flights to Europe. But then, like, you need to pay for rent at home and when you're there. So you're treated almost like a hobbyist but expected to be, like, Yeah, so that was what it was towards the end for me. It was, like, this is a hobby. This is fun. I do it because it's fun. But then, like, I got this amazing job. And that was paying my bills. And, like, that was fun. That wasn't fun anymore. So it was like, yeah. That structurally is just such a poor setup. Like, Mm. they expect you guys to give absolutely everything. And realistically, you can compete in the Olympics probably till you're in your mid-30s at absolute best, right? Yeah, max. So it's like, okay, well, dedicate your life to this. Mm -hmm. Dedicate your life to being great for these competition periods and, like, and lead-ups to them and obviously... And then it's like, we're not going to pay you, but we, if you do really well, we'll give you a bunch of money and we'll give you shoes yeah. and stuff. But if you hurt yourself, there's no point yeah. in us doing that. Like surely structurally in the Australian Institute of Sport, there needs to be some sort of like union or something where mm. they're like, yeah, this is the top athletes. And if you're in that pool, then you yeah. have like a two year contract or something. I agree. You That's made a wild. comment a while ago about no one giving a fuck about the Olympics unless it's swimming. Yeah. Um, in Australia, yeah. Is mm. is is it athletics that is kind of like uh, bottom shelf and others get support or is it blanket across the board, basically all of those sports that sit under, you know, AIS or WAIS get treated equally? Like no, nah, I think it's athletics. Yeah? Like I think the swimmers get looked after better than we do. I don't know that as a fact, but like, yeah, I think it's athletics. 
swimmers seem to be the darling of Australia. It's just like because oh, I, I think because we were good at it. Yeah. They were like, we'll funnel all this money into you because like you're going to bring home the medals. I'm exactly. like, I get it. Like I get it. It's business, but it's also like so hard when like you bust your nut so much and like you just fall short a bit and they're like, nut, you're cut. And you're like, okay, like I'm already sad, but now it's like, I need to get a fucking job. <laughs> that's cr- Yeah, that's and just like a And like all this other stuff that then you have to deal with where like you should be focusing on like training and like all that, yeah. That's insane. And the, so the pressure's mm. multiplied by, like I didn't, I was fully unaware of that. So like, yeah. The, I suppose ignorantly in my head, I was like, oh, you work your ass off and you're being paid to train and you're doing all of that. Mm-hmm. And then when it doesn't work out, it's like, you recover and you do your stuff it's like no nah, i better jump well otherwise i gotta get a fucking job yeah that's why yeah fucking hell it's savage well how was tokyo because i think you um, you're definitely the only olympian i know <laughs> <laughs> um to be honest it was pretty crap like i think just because of covid like everything was so underdone like we essentially like had to eat at the dining hall and they like advised us to take the food and go back to our room and then after we ate it was like you need to stay in your room so you don't get that olympic village no you don't get the experience of like hanging out with your friends and like meeting people and like seeing the city that you're in and like getting around the festivities of the country like you don't get any of that so it was like train eat sit in your room and like the village was so underdone like we had a cardboard bed and like our living room in our rooms was a fold out, four fold out chairs, a little like plastic table, not even a TV. And there was like seven of us in the room. So I'm like sick. I'm literally just going to sit on my bed for like 12 hours a day. It sounds like fire fest. <laughs> <laughs> literally. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's, you know what? It's just, it's weird though. Cause they do that. It's like, that seems unnecessary to be that budget about it. It's oh, like, there's people here and you need a table and you need chairs. It's like, why well, are like we rationing couch. this shit? Like a yeah. couch would be nice. The Japanese are the fucking pretty slick with their infrastructure and that's as well. what I thought. Like, mm. I was expecting, like, robots whizzing around. <laughs> like, everything, like, heat sensor touches. Uh-huh. Like, I was expecting, like, the best of the best. And I walked in and I was like, oh, my days. Like, Did you at least get the dope toilets that shoot water out? Yeah, but, like, it was one of those bathrooms. Like, you know the room that they just put in? Like, it comes as like I don't know it's like the way that the apartments were built was like it's like you buy a bathroom where it's like all like they just shove the room in and then they shove it out when you leave yeah Yeah. so like it was so bad like the shower head was like here on me (laughs) so I would be like in a half squat all the time like trying to wash myself like that's how I shower (laughs) (laughs) so I feel your pain yeah yeah it was it was really interesting it was a fucking shit show. It yeah. was an absolute shambles. I was watching your event and it's mm. just like, what the fuck are they? Even the commentators didn't know what they were doing. They were like, why is this? Because you, yeah. you stood on the track for so long mm-hmm. and, and it, was it was pissing raining. down yeah. with rain. And then they're like, you were like, am I fucking going or am I not going? It was a total shambles. I know. That sucks, man. I'm so sorry that happened. Yeah, it's okay. That's, but it I is a like shit show. I feel like that was also like the cherry on the cake with like... I've just had a shit run with like major competitions and like just stuff like that, that I was just like, I actually handled it quite well, to be fair. I was like, you know, handled it well initially when it started raining. Cause I was like, I actually did everything I could. Like I couldn't have done more. I'm it's fine. You know, bad luck, whatever. Like I'm not the only one in it. And then when I left and I like went around to like the top of the stadium and I saw that they like closed everything and the girls got taken off. And then they came back when it stopped raining and I was like, is this a joke? Like, why did I have to go in the rain? Mm. And then I got like really bitter and salty and. But the thing is, if you, if if you (laughs) make a big fucking deal of that, then you're, you're going to be the the person. But it was bullshit because watching it was just like, what the fuck Mm. is going on? And then I think even after you, when they did resume, they couldn't get the the fucking bar level thing up. And that Nina girl (laughs) was stuck on the track and Jesus Christ. Yeah. Man, that's a shambles, it's especially the fact that you have just worked so hard to get mm. there and then mm-hmm. they pull that kind of shit. Yeah. It's life. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> You're a hard woman. 
well, now now's the time to fucking figure out what what the next moves are. Yeah. You're doing really good things with Street X. Like all of the creative stuff is yeah, coming out. Yeah, I'm great. loving it. It's so fun, so fun. Like I initially started at Street X just like packing parcels and helping out, and then. Um, we had a meeting maybe like November last year with everyone and it was like, okay, like, what do you want to, what do you want to do here? Like, where do you see yourself going? Are you happy with what you're like currently doing or do you want to expand your role? And I was like, well, I really love like, cause I'd always go with Daniel to the photo shoots and just like watch as his girlfriend. And I was like, I'd really love to do that. Like, I love photos. Like I love fashion, styling. Like I love, yeah, I just like love the brand and the business. And um, they were like, okay, go for it. And I was like, whoa what the fuck like I've got no experience like no education in like marketing or like anything like that so it was pretty hectic but um I can confidently say that I've learned a lot um and grown a lot and um there's been some like really positive like feedback from the stuff that I've been doing which is like makes me like really proud and like builds my confidence to like keep kind of like experimenting and trying new things and like going bigger and better man in creative industry no one knows what they're fucking doing oh man like no one so like i've even mm. now like i have imposter syndrome where i'll do stuff and i get paid and i'm like fuck i wonder, yeah. why, I wonder why people like this you feel like you've, <laughs> you've kind of gypped everyone in some way but like you know i never studied mm. like i most did 50 percent of a degree in marketing at murdoch and i can tell you right now it's common sense yeah. it's common sense That's all it is. and if yeah. you're in it if you're in it and you're doing it and because you fucking have to make it work, right? Because mm. you, you can't be like, that shit didn't work out. We'll just do it. We'll just reschedule. It's like, no, this needs to go out. Like the, the wheels need to keep turning. Yeah. So you figure it out on the yeah. job. And if something isn't as good as you want it to be, next time you'll know mm. how to work it better. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah, you're not an imposter in this space. No. That's It's genuinely with the way yeah. that everyone is. I think it, it was also so hard as well because like, for those that know Daniel, he has a mind of his own. Like, he's so creative and, like, the shit that he comes up with, I'm just like, how the fuck am I going to match that? Like, some of the concepts and ideas he has for shoots, I'm just like, only you would think of that. And I guess it's good that I'm, like, so close to him and, I like, we live together, you know. Like, I guess I'm the closest person to kind of understanding that vision. So I think that's really helped. Um but that was the biggest thing for me and I was like he's done this all on his own and like there's no one else that does it like Daniel and so like to kind of like step into those shoes and like learn how he does it like has been really challenging but it's just like so fun like it's the only way you learn that stuff is being around being around people like it's it's such a big thing as well but being around people that like you respect and Mm -hmm. that you look up to like the way that they do things it's like just being around that, it rubs off on you and you start to understand things. You have someone to bounce ideas off and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. And in the beginning, it's very hard to like open your mouth to those things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, Daniel's a supportive guy and like you guys are doing very cool things. Tony, not on camera, no mic. Tony is um, (laughs) filming all that shit. And I see it all because it's edited next to me and it's great. Like, because I, especially because I was so involved in Street Mm -hmm. X for so long and then I was just like, now I get to see it mm. and where it is. It's a to- it's a hundred X, like two hundred X. You know, like it's fucking crazy. It's really great where it's got to. You know. Yeah. Did no. you ever feel like you were overstepping the mark? Like you know how you get like the girlfriend of the yeah. guy. Did you ever feel like you didn't sure shouldn't have an opinion in certain times because you were like the girlfriend, or did you just like muscle through it? I've, I'm very like opinionated anyway and I like say what I think and if I like something and if I don't like from the get-go even when I wasn't in the business like I'd be like yeah like very honest with my feedback so like I never really felt like that because I don't know I'm like I'm a hard lady like yeah yeah well you're gonna say you're gonna say yeah. your piece and it's like you fucking need that I as well especially when you're doing him. stuff like yeah you need people <laughs> around you being like I am the hard Russian woman in that's it yeah I can see that boy in the line (laughs) he needs someone to yank his leash from time to time anyway so I'm glad you could do that (laughs) and that's yeah being his boyfriend would be harder than any Olympics training oh my god (laughs) he's like a big baby I love him like a brother but yeah yeah, tough yeah (laughs) fully grown man child yeah he's awesome and now you've got Stefan in the office as well yeah 
How's he going? He's so good. It's been like so awesome having him come in and like we can all see that like so much stress and tension has just been like lifted off Daniel, which was like I think so crucial because I think Dan was just getting to a point where like he was this close to like having a mental breakdown because it was just like the business is growing and there's like only so much he can take on and keep like doing himself that um yeah, Stefan's been such a great addition and like yeah, we're just like on this upward Trajectory. fucking trajectory and we're just like going with it and yeah like it's fucking the best job ever it is great that it's you two in that um I, as a business owner you, it's very hard to let go of some of that control because mm. you're just so concerned about mm-hmm. like your vision or, or your your um your ideas being lost in translation yeah. and taken off in the wrong direction so to be able to have yourself and, and Stefan who know him really well to be able to kind of drive that must be must be yeah, like I said, a weight off his shoulders at yeah. least. I feel like it's been a massive change for everyone because like, you know, it's been a change for like Daniel to be able to like put his trust and faith into someone else or like others where usually it was always him doing it. Um, so there's been like definitely like a massive change for everyone and it's like, you know, me having the confidence to like run with my decision and not feel like, fuck, is this the right or wrong thing? Like just going with it and seeing what happens. Um so yeah there's been so many changes but like they're all so positive and like we're just like starting to like get going and like take it to another level so that's how you scale a business like you can't do it by yourself you need to let people in and finding the right people is the hardest thing in the world because a lot of the time people will they'll take their hands off the reins a little bit Mm. and then they'll be like nah fuck Mm. I, you know and like and grab it back and be like this doesn't fucking work but that you just hit a ceiling doing that mm. the only way that you can really take things you know to that next level because it's mm. already gone it's it's gone so big mm. in such a like in, in a reasonably short amount of yeah. time but you just never know where that stuff can go mm. and it's so it's so, it'd be super exciting being like you know being core involved with that in the sense of like that's a it's a really exciting thing to yeah. pivot into from what you've been doing because you're not going and becoming a receptionist or an no. accountant or uh, anything like that you know where you'd be like fuck this isn't exciting like yeah. it will probably have some it'll probably have some of the highs and lows that you used yeah. to you know and that's the thing like when I first started the role I had like so much self-doubt and like because I was like I know fucking nothing and like I'm so I like because like the business is so important to me even as like not a worker just being Daniel's partner like I see how much he puts into it that like it means so much to me to like make sure that what I'm doing is like good quality work and at the start I just kept like I just had no confidence in myself and like just doubting all of my decisions and Stefan was like look if you can go to two olympics and apply yourself to pole vault the way that you have like you can fucking do anything like you have the mentality you have the skill set the hard part is doing it once you've done that so now you need to just like take a step back and like change the context of what you're doing but like you have everything in front of you to like make it happen and i was just like fuck yeah like i'm just gonna do it and like go for it and like i'm just feeling so like empowered and like confident and just like yeah I'm just like ready to like that's sick it sounds like you're on the other side of that you know you're on the other side of the the kind of like turmoil Mm. and it's exciting again yeah that's fucking great so you and your sister are obviously really close Mm -hmm. Uh, she's had she's about to have a second baby Mm -hmm. right you just went over and saw her like what first time in a couple of years right well they were here for Daniel's birthday last year. So it's been about a year. Yeah, about a year since I've seen her. Is that like, do you find that recharging? Oh my God, yeah, it was so good. But like so sad because like we're best friends and like it's just so hard being so far apart from each other. Where does she live? Melbourne. But like I honestly like fate, like Daniel can vouch. I FaceTime her and Cooper, like my nephew, um, like first thing in the morning then I'm, when I'm like driving to work, when I'm on my lunch break, when I'm cooking dinner, like I literally speak to her like five times a day. So it's like, we're always together, but just like being together was just like, oh, the best. Oh, that's sick. Is this the first time you guys have kind of been apart apart for an extended period of time? I think it was, no, the first time was probably like the initial COVID lockdowns. Like I missed her whole pregnancy and the birth of Cooper and that was just like, 
the pits um, and then met him in December of 2020 when he was a little bubba and he, they came over and oh my god it was just like the best time ever and they stayed for like a month with Daniel and I um, so that was like super fun but yeah I'm gonna head back over to Melbourne in about three or four weeks for the birth of the second baby oh lovely yeah yeah she must be stoked to have you over there yeah <laughs> She it's, needs it. He's yeah. a fucking menace. <laughs> it's so nice that it's like opened up. Like I'm oh. going, we've been talking because I'm going away trying to figure mm-hmm. out where I'm going to live and what I'm going to do with my life from this point forward. Mm. And it's like, I'm, we're flying to Melbourne next Friday and I've been on a plane for fucking two and a half oh, years. It's just so exciting. It's so exciting. Like even with like Dan in LA right now, I'm like, I'm going with you on the next trip. Like there's just no question about it. Like I'm mm. going and like, I just want to like, get back those years where we've been sitting stuck inside like rotting away they went so strangely fast like i know but like like, but it it, but you you still like oh shit i'm fucking two years older than i was or i'm like like you just get so used to the pace of like we're so adaptable you Mm. just get used to anything that's thrown at you and then you're like you kind of feel ripped off you're like man i kind of haven't done shit for two years like, that's why now I'm, like, now that I have the freedom where, like, pole vault was something that always just, like, held me back. Like, I can't because I've got training and, like, you know, every holiday, if you think about it, is, like, drinking and eating and, like, just having the best time in the culture. And, like, when you do sport, like, you can't fully, like, relax and enjoy it because, like, you're always working to something next. And so now I'm just, like, now that I have this avail- like availability and freedom, like, I just want to, like, utilise the next six months and just, like get it all out of my system and like just like yeah enjoy is there anywhere you want to go that you haven't been able to go because of commitments um i'm pretty lucky that i've gone to lots of places um with pole vault but the biggest thing is like for so long i reckon only like the last two years of my career i like made an effort to like see the city i was in and explore whereas before that i was like in such a fucked mindset where it was like I train and I go back to the hotel and that's it. And I never saw where I was. And I hate myself for that because like, I wasted so many amazing opportunities to like see the countries I was in and I just didn't. Um, I definitely want to go to America, like LA, New York. I've been to New York once, but it was for pole vault. Um, And uh, I don't know. I just want to like travel with Daniel and no sport. Yeah. It sounds like you've had a cap on those experiences. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, yeah, I'm here, but I'm here for a fucking reason. Yes. And I can't really let my hair down. Yes. Like, so everyone, well, the majority of people you would know have had these experiences where they're like, went to Europe on holiday and they, they've done all these things and you've never really been able to completely experience that. Yeah. So there's a there's a ton of experiences waiting for you, I, I suppose. Know. Do you think the um, the trials and tribulations that you have endured are sort of synonymous with sports people in Australia. Like you obviously have a lot of um, uh, like teammates Mm. and and stuff still in the sport. Are they going through the same struggles you're going through? It's really funny you ask. Like I honestly don't know because it's not something that gets talked about. Like there's like shame around it, I think. I don't know. Like I'm sure there is and like even with the post I did yesterday I had like so many other athletes like DM me privately and be like thank you for saying this like I feel the same or like you know like it's nice to relate to someone and I'm just like okay wow this is interesting because like I was shitting myself and like it's really scary to like be vulnerable like that but it's also like I'm just like so disappointed that it isn't spoken about because like I can tell you I'm not the only one like 100 percent. it's it's probably a good thing that you've you've kind of aired it maybe it will give people the yeah. opportunity to, to to talk about it uh i, I know there's, there is a massive stigma around you know going to seek help mm. because still even with like especially with men but um like you said you're a tough woman um mm. and sometimes people see going seeking help as a sign of weakness mm-hmm. and they don't want to do it um, yeah. So the fact that you've gone and done it, that's great. And the fact that you can, you can tell other people that you've had benefits or seen benefits uh, out of out of actually talking about it, mm. that's, that's got to be a great outcome. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Like, yeah. I just want there to be more awareness and like for people not to feel like judged or like ashamed or embarrassed to like 
voice their feelings and stuff because like I feel like athletes are just made out to be like I said earlier like a puppet like you know you have a job you train and that's it but like you know we're dealing with so many other things like pole vault is like three hours of my day and then like for the other 21 I'm doing all these other things that are affecting me so it's like why are we not like helping people like in the bigger picture like be happy within themselves as a person and then they'll perform better like is there any support in it like are they like um is there people is there like a hr department is there someone that's like are you how you doing yeah yeah no there is there is and they're great and like you know there's a lot of like um we have like regular meetings about like what we're doing outside of training like are we working are we studying yada 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 so like they're making sure that like you're preparing for like post sport um and then like obviously the sports psychologists are great and they help a lot but i don't know i think for me personally because it was 17 years of like this deep rooted like routine and structure that like my problems and stuff were like so deep buried in and locked away that like without me having a meltdown they were never going to come out (laughs) yeah (laughs) has your family ever had or experienced similar issues to you because your auntie was a olympic pole vaulter as well who Um, i had a crush on by the way when i was like 10 11 years old she's so hot oh (laughs) (laughs) tatiana gregorieva yeah oh God, I know. she must have been famous for us to completely remember that name yes. as well. Yeah. It's so uncommon. Yeah. Name. Yes, because she was like mm, Chef's Kiss. Oh, yeah, she, she was. The, she was the. I remember at the same time it was like I think it was like Anna Kornikova yeah. and her, and they were like the the big the athlete. Girl. Yeah, yeah. There was only it. two sports I watched at the Olympics. It was pole vault and beach volleyball. <laughs> <laughs> at ten years old, oh, I think I was a little. It sounds like you have 10. some deep rooted. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you might want to speak to your psych about that. Do you want me to give you the number of mine <laughs> yeah, <might have failed>. <laughs> <laughs> but did she suffer any sort of similar afflictions has she ever spoken to you about it did you speak to her about it yeah interestingly enough i haven't spoken to her recently about it but like when i brought up all this stuff that was happening with my dad he was like okay you definitely need to like remove yourself and take a break because like i've seen this happen so many times where like it's just too much like you're just over all your senses and everything about it is just like hit peak you need to like reset and so that was really nice for him to say that because I was like I think I'm going crazy like what is going on with me like I've never felt like this like I'm always such a positive like have a bad day dust it off tomorrow's a new day like let's go like get it done whereas this time I was just like I can't and he was like no it's fine you need to just like stop like just stop and I fought it for ages and now I've stopped (laughs) It's good to have that support around you, yeah. to have that voice of reason. And I suppose the experience that he has and the Absolutely. experience that your family has, they're like, oh, well, we know what mm. this is and like, there's nothing wrong with this. Mm. But for you to be able to speak, like for you to speak out about it is huge. Like, I read that thing yesterday because we were going to do this podcast mm. a while ago and you were like, I can't fucking do it right now. And I was like, that's f- totally yeah, fucking fine because I'd just been, like, I went through a massive breakdown last year mm-hmm. and I never thought that that was possible i thought i was pretty much fine yeah but like a bunch you know i lost my dad i lost like a a bunch of years to to different things and Mm -hmm. i was just like you said before you like thought you were crazy like i thought i was schizophrenic yeah i was like oh shit it's gone like i've lost my mind Mm. and it's a strange place to be but that's the only place you rebuild from Mm -hmm. because you realize that like you're holding on to a bunch of stuff or you're like Mm -hmm. you just hit that stop point and your mind's like nah we're not going any further like we're gonna we're gonna fucking shake you around and make you figure out this shit because you can you can hold so much down you can hold so much in yeah and you can just tough it out but it it hits a point where you're like i need to fucking figure this out and you don't even know what it is no and that's the scary thing is like i got to a point where i was just like initially it was like I was at training and I'd hit like a difficult point where like I'd be in the gym and I'd hit a rep and I couldn't complete the rep and like the old me would stop and go again because like failing was not an option whereas like recently I was just like I can't be fucked like I didn't do it I don't care next exercise same thing at pole vault like I'd hit a mental block or like you know I had to tweak my technique or I felt a little bit of fear And usually I knew what to say to myself at the end of the runway to like get me in the zone and I'd go and I'd do it. Whereas now I was just standing there and I was like, I don't know what to say to myself. Like there's nothing. 
there's no like internal like compass and that was like the first sign that I was like okay something's going on because like I've never been like this like I'm always like so like just like risking it like pushing the boundaries like failure's not an option we don't quit like we always go up and wait like and then I just cried all the time about nothing and I was like this is like I'd see Daniel and I'd just cry or I'd get to work and he'd be like, are you okay? And I would just like start bawling and he'd be like, oh my God, like just go for a walk, like go for a drive. And I would just be like, it was like an out of body experience. And I think it scared, it scared me because I was like, I've never been like this. Like who is this person? And I think for him as well, being with me, knowing me as this like bubbly, over the top, like confident girl, being so like broken and like confused and sad it was like he was also just like what the fuck's going on (laughs) it's a negative feedback loop as well in that you you either don't perform or historically like i assume the way that you overcame like adversity if you had a shit time you'd go back the next day and you'd work on being better Mm. but when that that feedback loop when pole vault is not like is not helping you and in fact it's like detrimental you now no longer have like your own internal support mechanism to like fall back on like what you know your foundation essentially is crumbling Mm -hmm. so you got to find something else i feel like to yeah to rely on yeah and it just got to the point where like i was healthier than ever fitter than ever but i just felt weak I felt weak and tired and I just like and that was the burnout of like all the elements of like mental physical emotional like I just had nothing left to give I didn't have anything left to like push or like yeah it was weird like I just felt empty it's it's crazy because it's like in it obviously I hit it in a completely different way but it's like it's, it, it's all the same symptoms. Mm. You're just tired as fuck all the so time. So tired. And I was sleeping like 12 hours a night mm. and waking up and like bags under my eyes and like all my friends were like, your face, your, your eyes are just like hollow. And I'm like, something's wrong with me. Like, yeah. I can't be this tired. I thought I was like sick. I thought I had like a disease. <laughs> I was like, I went, because I went to the doctor initially about it and I was like, I think I was like low testosterone or something. Like mm. I just feel fucking gassed like all the time. But I didn't tell them about any of like the grief and all, yeah. any of that stuff because I was like you can't really diagnose mm. that like I wanted so I was like test me on everything you know like yes like I'll give you blood like they were cutting bits of my hair out all mm-hmm. that sort of stuff and they're like you're totally fine mm-hmm. and then I told them about that and they said oh you got like depression and this and I just didn't I was like you can't just fucking say that like yeah. I would like some form of test, please. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Medical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the, but and then you kind of fight against that. But with the thing with you were saying, like, involuntary crying. Mm. Like, I couldn't cry at all. I don't, like, it, it was like I was that shut down. And then when all that shit happened where it just, where I kind of had the, the breakdown, I would, like, cry, but, like, while I was, I was, like, vacuuming my house and, like, completely normal. And then oh. I'd just be, and I, I was, like, I can't go outside. Like, I can't go to IGA. No, honestly. I'm, it, it's going to fucking, it's going to crack. And I was, like, and then you're, like, oh, am I making this up? Yeah. Like, am I, and then you're, then you're just in yes. a loop in your head and you're, like, oh, my God, I'm fucked. Yeah, so I'm I done. would have moments where I was, like, am I just, like, feeding this negativity and am I just, like, buying into it? Like, mm-hmm. snap out of it. Like, stop. Yeah, you're being weak. Yeah, I'm, like, enough is enough. Like, you have nothing to be sad about and I'm like but I can't stop and there was like one time it was like so hectic like I I think I took the day off work and I was at home on my own and like Dan came home early and we were going to see Stefan's new house and um like they'd just moved in and I was like in my PJs and it was like do you want to go like if you don't feel up to it we don't have to like it's fine and I was like no I've been at home all day on my own like it's us like we're like best friends it's fine and so like we're driving there and I'm like literally in my pajamas with my slippers like my hair's wet like no presentation and like we pull up and there's like all these cars out the front and I was like who the fuck is here and he was like oh like his parents like Luke and Mm. Witter and like some other couple and I literally had a panic attack and started crying and I was like I can't go in like what am I going to say what am I going to do like look at me and like I've never ever been like this I never give two shits and he's like, oh, oh, 
I've got like a sample vest in the back, like you can throw over. And I'm like, it's not the clothes. Like, I don't know how to speak to people right now. Like, I don't want anyone to see me. Like, look at me. And I literally sat, and these are like people I see like every week, like family, like they wouldn't care. (coughs) And so like, I literally sat on the couch the whole night and I was just like, oh my God, like fuck, 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 fuck. And I was like texting Daniel, like, can we leave? Like, can we go? But his phone was like up on the bench and so he wasn't with it. And so like, he'd come and sit next to me and just like hold on to me just to like make me feel comfortable because I was like wigging out. And then he was like, oh my God, I didn't see your message. Like, it's okay, we can go, we can go. And I was like, I need to get out of here. But like, it's just like wild because like, that's not me. It's an alarm. It's so it's like scary. A, it's like a low fuel alarm. Like, and you don't ever, like you hit points of burnout where, and like, we have very different lives, but like you hit a point of burnout and there is a limit and you kind of push that limit all the time. Yeah. And then it's like, there's a cliff point. Yeah, and then and that is it's an it's literally an alarm. Like yeah. it's like your body it's 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 like a fucking burglar alarm. It's just like you start doing crazy weird shit. You're like, what the fuck is going on? And yeah. it's just your body going, nah, you you gotta stop. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta stop right now and you need to look and you need to re you need to re center mm-hmm. yourself because otherwise we've gone as far as we can. Yeah. And everyone always tells you as well, like you know, watch out for burnout. Like, oh, if you're working really hard or you're doing something, you love people and it's like a common thing and I they're know. like, oh, well, what, you know, make sure you don't burn out. It's like, what the fuck do you mean? Like, how am I going to, what, you know? what, what do I do? Just like not try my hardest for yeah. a while? Like, is that, is that what you need to do? And you have no concept of it. But I suppose now I'm like, I can see the, mm-hmm. sim- I can see the early warning signs and stuff. Like mm-hmm. for me, I just start to like completely completely shut down like emotionally so i have no emotional response to anything and i'm like oh okay this is if i keep doing this in two months i'm gonna be fine red flag yeah yeah so no plans as to what's next it's just you just finding liz again hey yeah just like working and like i don't know just throwing myself into that because like definitely since starting this new role I've been limited with like the amount I can import with training because like obviously traveling and stuff for competitions and I'm away for like X, X amount of time. Like it's hard to like push a project to like a big level when you're not there. Um, so I'm like really keen to just like see how I can push myself in the workspace. And then once Dan's home, I want to sit down and just like plan like a holiday for us or like something like that. I want to see my family overseas, like just little things that COVID and pole vault has made really difficult. Mm. And your folks are in Russia still, right? They're in Kazakhstan now. Oh, really? Yeah, my dad got a job in Kazakhstan. Um, so they've been there for maybe six months now. Um, so I want to get over there to see them, but I want to go when it's snowing. So maybe like Christmas. Oh yeah. Apparently there's actually some snowboarding to be had in And uh, Yeah, no, my dad goes like every second day. Really? Wow. Like I've got videos. It looks like insane. And then also I want to like snowboard and ski. Mm. I've never done it. Yeah, all the things you can't do in case all, you get yeah, injured. No, literally all the things I can't do. That'd be so fun. I know, like Dan's been to Japan a few times and he's like, it's the fucking best. Josh went to Japan. <laughs> yeah, I've heard about that trip. No snowboarding. No, not a well, not that the type majority of snowboarding. Of it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snowboarding's what got him in trouble. There was, there was no snow where there should have been <laughs> snow, Oh, you can't snowboard now. Well, yeah, I can't go to Japan, unfortunately, but... We can go to like Whistler. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Switzerland. My, I would love that'll to do. do. <laughs> we went yeah. to we went to Andorra once. That's a beautiful place. It's like um, on the border of France and Spain. Oh. And I didn't know what Andorra was, but Andorra is like a municipality, like Monaco. Oh. So Monaco, like it's its own country, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And Andorra, Vatican City as well. Andorra is the same. So tax-free electronic goods and alcohol. So tick tick, and we one of the that. like largest ski areas on the planet. Um, and it's wow. beautiful. It's just so high, and you're like you've got. We went literally on a bus from Barcelona, and we end up in this beautiful like mountainous area. The world oh, is just I know. an amazing place. I'm so excited. But yeah, no Japan for me. I'd love to do like a, like a hell trip, like go to LA for example, hire a car, mm. drive to like Colorado, yeah. and catch a plane to Canada, and go do that. Like just. 
Something really, really fucking extravagant. Mm. Well, we're all, yeah, we've all been cooped up. Like, you do your little travels, you know, you go to Bali or you go I to... I can't go down south again. No, <laughs> fuck. Like, I can't go down south again and I can't go to Ronis. Like, I'm done. I feel you. Just, I've started like, booking, I've started booking flights. I've just started booking I'm flights done. and it's <laughs> the fucking best thing ever. You literally just... Like I was like oh my God. on Skyscanner and I was like, well, oh, that's pretty cheap to you. It was like 16 bucks, no, 1600 bucks return to Europe. I was like, I know. Oh, I'll just book it for this period and then I'll make it work when I, yeah. when it gets there, you know? And then yeah, going to Melbourne and it's like, oh, I haven't done this in so fucking long. It's just like, it's, it just it's gives you that little feeling. like boost to like get back on the horse and it just like, makes you excited. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm looking forward to some shit. Mm-hmm. I think it's been such a period, like obviously this, during that period, you were training for an Olympics that was going to happen and then not going to happen. And that would have been fucking crazy. The rest of us were just going, oh, I hope, yeah. I hope our parents don't die. You know, like I, that's, that was like <laughs> the know. first thing and then feeling selfish because you were feeling cooped up, but everyone else was like locked down and you're like, oh, we're just kind of stuck. And it's a, there's, an, mm. there's, a, there's a unique experience that was had here and there's probably worse experiences that were mm. had for people in other places by all means, but... It's still a, it's, it's definitely still a stifling couple of years and just doing things like starting to book flights. I reckon there's going to be no one here oh God. <laughs> in like four in months winter, time. There's going to be nobody because everyone will be the same. Like I was like, I could go and I was like, eh, summer's pretty good. I'll stay for summer because it's like, yeah. you can go out, you can do stuff, you get a bit of sun. And then as soon as winter's coming, it's just like, yeah, uh, I'm going to be fucking oath. I'm fucking <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Legit. There's going to be no one here in July. No. Nah. Everyone's gone. July 4th, I have <laughs> <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you were actually a household name in Japan while I was uh, cooped up in there. Really? Because the only thing that I... One of the only things we got to read that wasn't like a book was the newspaper. And even though it was in Japan, uh, Japanese... They could translate it for me, and it was the it, the Olympics was like a hot topic in the Japanese newspaper, oh, wow. whether it was going or not going. And I was like, I've got a friend who's like got to come <laughs> over for this, and everyone knew about it. We we're all oh. talking about it. You got a very large prison following. <laughs> in Japan. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks, brothers. Yeah, I'm sure you had a lot of support when it did actually come off. <laughs> I don't know whether they were able to watch it. Yeah. Though. <laughs> we didn't have a TV. <laughs> I am a little bit sketched out about flying though. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Oh, I'm good with that. I'm fucking get me on there. Yeah, for real. At this point though, you're just, it's just like, fuck, the plane can go down, whatever. Oh, I know. Like, it can't <laughs> get worse. I'm sketched out. I've got to get my booster to, to get on the plane. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, I can't be fine. Because I got sick on the second so one. You're going to get so cruel. I know. Well, I never, I don't really get sick. Like, and then I was spouting that to everyone. <laughs> Um, Your card was dealt. Yeah, for real. Like I was, just, it was so funny because yesterday I was like, I'm immune, and then I woke, I woke up this morning and I was like, I don't feel very well. <laughs> but yeah, they, I was. Uh, so I did the first one, and I was training. We did the Rottnest Half Marathon, mm. so I was like training for that badly. By the way, I'm, there's no athlete here, um, but I was training for that. So I was like, I got my first jab, and then went and ran like 15 kilometers that night. Oh my and lord! And my girlfriend was like, she she took time off work or like had planned. You know, she's like, oh, mm. I'm probably going to get sick and stuff. And I hadn't even conceived it, and I was fine. And then the so the second one, my alarm went off, and I was like, oh shit, I've got my second jab today. I like totally forgot, and I just walked from here down to the convention center, got it, came back to work as if nothing was wrong, and I was just like, nah, I was fucked for like seven days. <gasps> Completely Like I was like Light sensitive I had to like oh my I listened to an God. audio book With a fucking pillow on my head And it was like Five days after Are you okay? I, the I was like What the fuck is this And I was just like, it, was, it was hell I was just like This is bullshit <laughs> So then I, I went to the chemist To book in my Like the chemist Next to my house To book in my um, My jab And the woman was like Yeah get the Moderna because if you got sick off the second jab of Pfizer, apparently. Oh my God, stop. Moderna. I got two Pfizer's and then Moderna. Yeah. And the Moderna put me on my whole. Oh, like shit. I was so. But see, I didn't get sick after the first two. Okay. Maybe you just get one of three is going to get. Yeah, <laughs> that could work. I honestly think that maybe I have like some, <laughs> some God genes because <laughs> I'm dodging this shit like the Matrix. I had two Pfizer's. 
I had a sore arm on the second one for like half a day. Fine. Had the booster. <laughs> Went to the chemist. And the little Asian lady behind the pharmacy desk administered my dose. And she's like, you have to sit down and wait 15 minutes. And I was like, yeah, cool. <laughs> and just walked out the door. She's like, wait, you're not waiting? I'm like, nah, I'm fine. Walked straight out. Fine. Next day, woke up, had a sore arm, lasted half a day, nothing. So I've had all three, all Pfizer, no repercussions. And one of the only people in my friend group that hasn't got COVID yet. So I'm thinking wow. maybe if someone wants to do some tests on me, potentially my blood. Use my blood. Might have some sort of special antibody. Wow. Or might still have a bunch of narcotics floating around in it. Yeah. <laughs> Tend to kill anything. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Joe Rogan's espousing about ivermectin. We've decided that cocaine, cocaine. is the perfect antidote to COVID. There you go, guys. You heard it here first. You want to avoid... The- Oh, fuck, maybe. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. <laughs> maybe not. It's going to be a warning. It's going to be a maybe government not. warning on this. <laughs> Fuck, it bashed my arm though. God, I couldn't raise it above my Yeah, that was the only thing it. I really got after the first two. And then after the third, I was in bed. Like. Oh, it's bullshit. Oh, so fuck, good it is luck. What it is. Oh, I thought about it like mixing trainer. drinks. So you don't go out, drink two bottles of wine, and then start on beers because you're going to have a hangover. So I went Pfizer, Pfizer, Pfizer. <laughs> Keep it consistent. Yeah, no, I see that. But also I've heard that like if you mix it up, you get more like immune to different strains. Right. You just get them all. I mean, we're all going to get them all anyway, so but fuck. Yeah, yeah, on. exactly. Just collect all that shit. I'm down. I'm, I'm in the top three now because there's like, what, six, seven people in here? Yeah. Yeah, and like four of them have had COVID now. So we're just waiting. We've got like a Deadpool. <laughs> like we have an anti-vax bro in here who's like one of my best friends. Is he okay? Yeah, he's good. But he's, he's good, except for the public sentiment against him. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, me and the other guy are... A vac up. I think he's got the three and I've got the two. But COVID's just been fucking everywhere around me and I just can't get it. I know. I feel like I've already had it. Yeah, I kind of feel like that as well. But I, I, I think if I... I don't know. I went and saw Johnny today, Kufos. Mm-hmm. I delivered him some yeah, coffee. Yeah, and he was like... He had the bag out the window. <laughs> it was awesome. But he was like... Uh, I said, um, did you... Because I've had a few little bouts of like just feeling shit. Like yeah. for me, my immune system, if, I'm, if I get sick... So my ex-girlfriend worked with kids. So she would get sick all the fucking time because kids are just disease yeah. machines. And, um, and I would never... So like if, I, if there was like an illness that had come into the house, I get tired because I never get tired. Like I'm, I'm a mental case. So my brain just fires all the time and then I sleep when I pass out. <laughs> Except if I'm sick. And if I get sick, I, fo- I get super fucking tired out of nowhere at like 7 p.m. And then, and you then know. I sleep... And then I'm fine. And then whoever I'm with Dies. is wildly ill for like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and that's happened a couple of times recently. Wow. And I'm like, oh, maybe I've got COVID. And then, but I've, I've, my rat tests are fucking stacking up. I'm good. I'm single lying all the way. <laughs> but Johnny said that he, he's like, I did two rat tests and, and they were both negative. And then he went and did the other one and he was positive. <gasps> so who knows? If you don't get tested, you just can't get COVID. That's the fucking... That's why I haven't done a single rat test. (laughs) Not even one. No. Good job. Unless I'm like toes up, like bedridden, Mm -hmm. I'll do one. But Mm -hmm. other than that, like, fuck, we're all going to get it. I've got shit to do. Yeah, And there's shit. There's so many illnesses that aren't COVID. And it's fucking flu season. Mm. Like... True. What's the fucking Mm. difference? No. And rat tests are expensive as fuck. Like IGA is selling them shits for like 50 bucks. Really? Yeah, I paid $65 for five of those mm. fucking things because I had to because someone at the gym, oh, I a ca- kid, oh. fucking children, I tell you, they're the bane of my existence. They're like the rats in the Black Plague, <laughs> just <were> scurrying <laughs> around carrying disease. <laughs> carrying COVID. Exactly. So I had to go home and fucking buy them. And of course, the government ones, they were going to send you like 15 or something. Oh, I know. That was seven years ago. Still haven't seen those. I've moved house now, so they may have even been delivered. I haven't fucking got them. It's really just a fucking shambles. You see, they're talking about rolling back fucking mandated vaccines or something over in the East Coast now. Oh. Yeah, they still dropped my ass in Melbourne, apparently. There's, there's, there's a kerfuffle about actually dropping the vaccine mandate. So mm. we've all now gone out, got jabbed up to the fucking yin-yang. 
And now they're going to Yeah, well, no, back. that'll happen eventually. It's got to, right? It's a matter of time. And then we're going to have to deal with those people that are going to give you the holier than thou mm. on their soapbox with their fucking bad attitudes. I told you this was all a conspiracy. Yeah, we're going to have to All of you mudbloods <laughs> with your you weren't shit. At the bri- you weren't at the walks. <laughs> <laughs> Where were you at the protests? <laughs> I've been waiting. Care. I've been waiting in the car. Like I was agnostic about the whole thing. I was um, just like, what's the least? What's the path of least resistance? hundred. <laughs> I'm a human pincushion. Just give me fucking everything. Dose me up. Yeah. Can't be that bad. I love the one out that were like, oh, you guys will do fucking bags of drugs that you find on the floor, but you won't take a vaccine. It's like, where's the upside of the vaccine? <laughs> You can, Maybe also, you. you can also look up the pill database and at least check what's <laughs> in the ones yeah. that you found on the floor. No one knows what's in that fire shit. I don't think that many people are going around with litmus tests on fucking oh, drugs. I've never done that. <laughs> hey, you know before you said that you felt like um, athletes are treated like puppets? Mm. Was that there's like... Explain to me the system that works at the moment for athletes. It's It's like... Australian Institute of Sport. Yeah. You get accepted in. Are you like, um, do you kind of perform to a level and they mm. say, come and join the Institute of Sport? Or? Yeah. So I feel like the AIS isn't really a thing anymore in terms of like athletics. So essentially what they've done now is like each state has like its specialty event. So like Perth is pole vault. And then like, I think... I don't even know what the others are. But like, is Perth pole vault because you and Nina are both from here and you were yeah, the top yeah, athlete? Yeah, yeah, so they yeah. were just like, eh, we'll just make Perth yeah, pole vault. Yeah, Perth pole vault. And also we have the best facilities here. Like we have an indoor facility for like winter to train in, which like there is nowhere else like that in Australia. So they've kind of done like hubs everywhere of like, if you want to like excel, you need to move to this state. And then like, if you're good enough, we'll pick you for the for that state's institute. So like WACE, the WA Institute of Sport, is like our kind of like, I don't know, like our boss. And what's the structure? Like do they they just give you a training regimen and stuff or are they Um, supportive? Yeah, so like if you're on scholarship, you get like physio um, covered, you get like X amount of money covered towards massage, you get a travel fund um, and you obviously get to use like the gym and use the coaches without paying a fee. Whereas like if you're a junior, there's like coaching fees and all of that and you don't get any kind of like support in terms of traveling and stuff. And do you feel like that's, cause obviously like you're, you're, you're the product, right? Mm. So like you need to perform mm-hmm. in order. It's like, this is our athlete and if she performs well, like we're doing our job. Yeah. Do you feel like that's their kind of, um, you, do, you get overlooked as being like a, a human being? Yeah. Like it's like KPIs. Yeah. For athletes. Like when I spoke to someone about like taking a break, they were like, oh, you know, we might need to have a meeting about like um, just for the organization because it's going to like change the KPIs. And I was like, what? Like I'm a person and I'm exhausted and my mental health is plummeting. Like I'm not a fucking KPI. No shit. And that's like not a discussion I'm willing to have. No shit. Period. And we'd spoken about it before about like the commodification of yes. people. It's like yes. you're a product, yes. not a person. And it sucks because you should be a person first because mm-hmm. at the end of the day, if you want to drive performance, mm. you need to be nurtured. If you're not nurtured and you're not supported, the performance is going to suffer. Absolutely. So it's almost ass about face in the way that they're dealing with it. Mm. Again, archaic fucking systems, not not sorted to to actually deliver on fucking goals yeah and i don't know if it's like different in other countries and that's why i say like america is so good at athletics and the uk is so good at athletics because they must must and i know that they do have like different structures um yeah it's it's a weird thing though because it it happens a lot in australian sport like i'm a big uh, football like soccer fan yeah and there's it's just been like a shambles forever mm-hmm. you know like there's there's no the national team's terrible yeah but no, i don't know but, why like there's why so much money there's still... so many people playing football it's like why is it still like that i know i don't understand like, like structurally you, have all you can the put resources. things in place yeah, it's, it's, begging it's belief. because my understanding of it and my opinion on it is because people don't like people 
don't leave those positions. So you end up with a bunch of people that are really disconnected from the athletes and disconnected from the way the world is now Mm -hmm. that are still running and still empowering these positions. And they're like, this is the way it's always been. This is how we do things. And people aren't leaving. We were talking before about like boomers not leaving their post, you know, like staying. Mm -hmm. And I I was saying about, um, I think it was when you were out, Express Magazine. Like I had friends that worked at Express Magazine and that was like a, a cultural fucking anchor in Perth but what happened was that the people who were running it didn't they didn't move on Mm -hmm. so they aged out of it but stayed being like no this is what I do this is who I am I'm like the fucking editor of of Express Magazine and they're still putting fucking UMI on the cover (laughs) and it's like no one gives a fuck and the people that were working there were like dude we need to bring this into the into the modern era we need to speak to the people but people, if you if you retain your position, and I think this comes back to like what you're going through at the moment, it's like if you if you're defined by what you do instead of who you are, yes, then it kind of starts to become toxic because mm-hmm. you're not going to be a fucking forty year old pole vaulter. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like no. So if you do hold on to that, what do you do? You move into a position where you're like coaching or you're involved mm. in this and that, and it just. I think there is a lot of people around that don't have a fucking clue who they are and they're clinging to like what they do. Yeah. And then you can't retire or leave that post because you will be faced with who the fuck you are. Yeah. Or have no idea and like having that kind of like breakdown or that reality check. Yeah. When you're in your 50s would be fucking terrifying. Oh God, yeah. Like in a way I, I feel like because I was in it from such a young age... I didn't ask those questions or like look at myself as like an equal to these people in these institutes or like, I don't know. I feel like I always felt like the little girl or like, you know, they tell me what to do. And I almost wish I started later once I had more of a sense of like who I am and my worth and like what I stand for, because then I feel like away from the sport, I'd know who I am and I'd be proud and confident and, have my values and beliefs and then build pole vaulting on top of that exactly but it was the other way which is like it is what it is like I wouldn't change it because like I've had an amazing run thus far but I am envious of people who have figured it out early and are succeeding now at peace with who they are and in and within sport whereas like I didn't have that well, you had a totally different life experience to yeah. to a lot of people because you were, I mean, to be elite, it's something you need to be training from from a young age, right? Like, look at the is it the ballerina, not ballerinas, um, figure skaters. Mm. They like winning gold at, when they're like fourteen years old and stuff, and they're having like um growth, like body growth issues mm. and stuff. It's it's like at what level? At, at what point do you say like? you need to be like in um i think it's in spain you can't sign a professional deal in football until you're 18 Mm. whereas in the uk it's like 15 or 16 yeah and it's because they're like we don't want you need to fucking figure out you need to be a human being you need to be you need to at least have some of a childhood before i think that's so good like i signed my first shoe contract with adidas when i was 15 wow and they dropped me when I was 25 or 26. After injury? Just after like a couple of years of not performing well and then like COVID, like when COVID hit, their budgets obviously just got fucking... And they just wiped everyone And out. they were like, okay, we literally can't keep anyone unless you're like an Olympic medalist. And it's fucking added ass. Yeah, you're like, are you and guys they, really struggling that badly? They've you for 10 years and then they're like, oh, know. sorry guys, there's a flu going around. We can't really afford. Yeah. Fuck off. Jeez, Fuck it's off. fucking... It, it must be one of those things because you build relationships with people, right? Mm. And then it's like... It must be one of those things where you're just like, man, it's a job. no one cares, do they? Like, no one cares about me. No. They just care about, yeah, KPIs. Mm-hmm. For the layman, like, pole vaulting, hey, to be honest with you, like, Olympic sports, especially track and field, athletics, some weird fucking sports. Discus, mm. archaic as fuck. Javelin, why do we need to throw spears anymore? No. Pole vault is really strange. Like, if you're an alien looking down, it's like... What the fuck are these people doing? Yeah. What, what's it, what's it like? Like, what, uh, sorry, I don't even know. Like, how high are you 
are you jumping? Like, what's the bar set at generally for you? Like, what was your what was your PB? My PB was four meters sixty centimeters. And four meters sixty is like fucking high as shit. Mm. What's it? What's it like? Like, what's going through your head? Because I like talk to I have a lot of friends who are like race car drivers, mm-hmm. and they talk about like a flow state. Mm. The kind of blinkers on, everything else kind of goes. Oh, almost yeah. blurry and you just got like like blinkers on mm-hmm. is it the same for you like what what's what talk me through like you running up and like your preparation because obviously yeah. you've got a you've got a routine it's almost like a golf swing you know when i start oh, yeah. there's a there's a thing that i do and i know you do as well like mm-hmm. can you talk us through like what what that's actually like um it's definitely like a blinkers on moment, but I feel like before each jump, I'm like babbling shit to myself in like English and Russian and I couldn't even tell you what I say. I'm just like saying all these things to like get myself hyped up. And then like once I take the first step, like it's essentially over, I'd say in like five seconds, 10 seconds, like that's it. So like once you take that first step, like you don't even realize what's happened until like you land on the mat. And that's just like the repetition of doing Mm. it over and it's like muscle memory. That's all it is. And like the way that you perform well is when like you're healthy and you're strong and you're confident and you take that first step and you're like, I'm fucking invincible. And then it happens. Whereas like, and that's the thing with pole vault. I think it's honestly like 90% mental and like 10% physical. So like if your head's not in it, like it's just not going to happen. So it was like a golf swing. Like if I take a golf swing, I know at the top of my golf swing whether I'm going to hit a good shot or a bad shot. Yes. So, like, as I'm running in, when I hit, like, the point of, like, liftoff, I know what that feels like when it's good. Mm. And, like, from that point when you leave the floor, if you're in the right position, it's like a slingshot. Like, it just goes. You're a passenger almost. Yes. Yeah. So, it's when it's it's that point of impact with the pole on the floor that you know. Yeah. So you're the way that it hits, like if it hits in the right angle, if your body's in the right angle, if you jump up high enough, like you hit the pole and it bends, it bends in a way where it feels effortless. Like it feels like you're not trying. Like the best jumps are the ones that feel easy. Yeah, it's that makes whack. a lot of sense. No, nah, well, it's, it's, it's like golf. Yeah, like yeah. The, the easiest swing yes. makes the best shot generally. Yeah. yeah, that's really interesting. So you'll know pretty much. Mm-hmm. Before you've even left the floor, if you're going to make it, so. But does it happen so quick that when you're on the way up, are you thinking, "Fuck, this isn't going to go well," or do you not really know it's not going well until you actually hit the hit the bar? Nah, you know, you know away. as soon as you go, and like sometimes there's jumps where I'm like squealing as soon as I leave the floor because I'm like, "Oh my god, oh my god, I know <laughs> this is good, I know this is good," like don't fuck it. And so your body, but your body going over, there's obviously a bunch of technique. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of technique and shit, but like when you've done it so many times for 17 years, like once I leave the floor, I don't even know what I do. Like my body just takes over. It's just purely automatic, yeah. It's purely automatic, yeah. That's crazy because that is that level of repetition is like, that would be more normal to you than like. Fuck, even talking about this, I'm just like, oh, I love that feeling. Yeah. (laughs) Is that what would bring you back? Yeah, I think so. Mm. Do you think there's scope for you to maybe go, go into coaching or maybe be a mentor Fuck to some, no. some young... <laughs> no it's coaching. absolute no. <laughs> That's a flat um, no. What about some sort of mentorship? I mean, like, I'd love to, like, speak about my experiences um, because I feel like, especially coming back from a broken leg and, like, setbacks and resilience, like, I think I have a lot to offer in terms of, like, that area. But with coaching, like... I've been in it for so long, like I just can't. And like, I've tried over the years to like help out and coach, I don't have the patience. I'm like, you're not doing it right, why aren't you doing it? Mm. And I think because for me, like the technical side of things came so easily because I started so young, I don't have that like... Ability to teach. Yeah, ability to teach and ability to be like calm and like nice to the athlete. I'm like, why can't you do it? It's I could do hard. it. Why can't you do yeah, it? Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. put your fucking arms up and go. Like. Mm, mm. I think there's so much, I mean, there's there's so much room for you to do fucking anything mm. because you're 27 years old and you've had yeah. an incredible life experience so far. I think there's so much, like, just in speaking out about, like, wanting to find yourself and not be defined by those things mm-hmm. and, you know, like, people giving you DMs and stuff. 
I don't see that stuff that, that often from mm -hmm. athletes. So I think it's a really good, it's like a, it's, it's a really major thing you've done and it's, mm. and it's something that you can speak to. Yeah. There'll be so many athletes. Like think about how many people are like not making it to that elite level yeah. and having those questions at that point. Like, I think the more you said before about it being still like um, stigmatized or whatever, mm -hmm. I think it's really becoming less and less at such an advanced rate that mm -hmm. like people like you speaking out about this in, yeah. inside of those things is like so important. I always thought that when, um, do you remember when Ben Cousins did the fucking documentary about like, and it showed him yes. like smoking meth and stuff. And I remember people, I don't argue with my mom about it because I don't care about footy at all. I couldn't give less of a shit. But I thought that was like, the craziest thing I'd ever seen because this was like the national hero. He was like won the Brownlow medal mm -hmm. and he was happy with them releasing in a documentary, a literally video of him smoking crack. And I was like, this is so important because this is addiction and people need to see this. And still people were like, oh, he's just a fucking crackhead. Like he had everything. It's like, do you not understand what it would be like to be him? Like it surely oh you would God. have to have some concept of the fact that like he doesn't get to have a normal life. And he has to be kind of a little bit fucking mentally different to everyone in order to be able to perform at that level. And then to have lived that and go, I'm fucked. And this is what it looks like. And for people to still judge that, that was like 12 years ago or something. It was like a long fucking time ago. And then the media jumped on him for so long. Like every mm -hmm. oh, Ben Cousins is at it again. He's doing this and that. And now he's a fucking what news presenter on channel 10. Is he? I think yeah, he's they've fucking just playing for council. No, no they put him like, on the TV. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, he's like, a, him. yeah, and but that's the thing is it's like that's where the world is coming back around and going. The the problem is that there's no accountability for that. Like no one's going to be like, oh, sorry, mate, we fucking, you know, we used you to sell fucking papers or to to be. It's, it's so for sad for people to watch the news, but they do that to people. Like people need to they need to realize that athletes are human beings mm -hmm. and not just on like a structural level and the KPIs and stuff we were talking about on the level of like the average person. Mm -hmm. Because yep. I think a lot of people are like, oh, but your life must be great because you get to go to the Olympics and you get, you know, people will think you get fucking oh, paid and you're no, like, yo, I like I don't get fucking paid. I still need to work a job or like yeah. if I don't perform, my sponsorships go away. It's, it's, it's fucking interesting to me. Like it's interesting mm -hmm. to me to know that that's the way that that shit works. Mm -hmm. You made a good point in that, like to be at that pinnacle of the sport, you have to be an exceptional individual. You have to be outside of the norm, but we still treat them like they are the, the norm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really the crux of the issue. It's like, these guys aren't normal. And to put the same constraints that we put on other people, who can just go to the shops and not have to worry about, you know, being seen or being bothered or ask for selfies or whatever. There is a an emotional weight that comes with being in the public eye that is outside of the norm. It's it's almost irresponsible of us to treat them in a way that we treat everyone else and put the same level of expectations that we have on everyone else on them because of what they have to do. It's like it's it's telling about how we treat sports people, I think, um, mm -hmm. and I think we need to be more compassionate about how we treat people in the public eye, and pe especially sports people, um, because so like so much of themselves is tied to to that, and it's like if they fuck up, that's ev that's everything. Now you're just a big fucking white out. You're a piece of shit. Off you go to the bin. No yeah, it's easy anymore. just to just to put that. That's what I was saying about the Olympics thing. It's like if you mm. have a tantrum live on TV, but Women's Day are gonna fucking shit on you. It's like, hey, you didn't care about me before, mm -hmm. but now you're gonna do that. You know, like that's yeah. and that's the 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 reality of the life you live would just be so fucking weird mm. with that sort of stuff. You know, like it's like. And then if you do, if you get a medal, suddenly, like, everyone fucking knows you. And everyone loves you. Yeah. And you're the best. But, like, when you're struggling, no one gives a fuck. It's so weird. I, yeah. It's, it would be such a weird... It would be such a weird structure of, like... Because it's your... Re that would be your reality growing up. It's, like, yeah. all of those things. And that's a really weird mm -hmm. world to live in. It's completely different to, like... Did you have trouble like connecting with friends and stuff when they were? Because you'd hit that point where people are going out, mm -hmm. partying all the time, and like, yeah. don't get me wrong, like, I've seen you out partying and stuff yeah. like, but you, you, it's not the same. Yeah, you can't do 
you, you can't be as free and just as open as, yeah. as everyone else. I mean, to be fair, like when I was 18, I moved out of home and I rebelled like really hard because I didn't have like a normal upbringing where I could like go to parties and have sleepovers with friends. Like it just wasn't an option. So I re- moved out of home and went, fucking skits and just like partied heaps and like obviously my pole vault and performance like went downhill but like I felt like I needed that to like get that out of my system and like be normal with my friends and like have those experiences but then like it still wasn't normal because I would still bash myself up for making that decision and I had to lie to everyone about it because it wasn't allowed like and then the anxiety that came with that was like crippling because everything's a lie you're not allowed to have fun and you're a robot so like in the end built into all of that absolutely like everything i everything i did outside of pole vault that didn't benefit my performance or my training i had guilt and i felt the way that like i feel bad like i'm not going to train well i'm going to have a bad sleep I need to eat X amount of calories tomorrow because I'm in deficit today. Like it just doesn't fucking end. And so like, even when I went to do those fun things and have fun, I'd have like 30 minutes and then I'd catch myself and be like, oh my God, I shouldn't be here. I need to go home and I'd wig out and leave. Wow. That's the real, yeah. Like I think people don't like, cause I would never even understood that. That's crazy. Like I would make myself physically ill because I felt so much anxiety and like guilt for trying to have fun and being normal. And that's all the stuff that you're kind of keeping down and keeping down and yes. keeping down. And that's what leads to yeah. a fucking breakthrough, right? Mm-hmm. It's a break, a break down and then yeah. a breakthrough. Yeah. That's fucking crazy. I know. Well, I'm so glad that you got to this point where you can, you can talk about it and you feel yeah. some peace and you can feel like you can move on to the next step. Yeah. I think that's great. And if anyone um, has an opportunity, check out Liz's Instagram and, and have a look at her post because I think it's powerful and I think it's important and I think people should should be aware. Yeah. Thanks. Stay up as well. Stay up on the Instagram. Like I fucking I, I get know. Around well, your now stories. I'm like, oh my god, what am I gonna post? Like I'm normal. <laughs> yeah, like, but people care about you as a person. I know. Like, I'm like, am I gonna lose all my followers now because I'm not posting like oh, pictures no. of me in like little bikini like briefs and like little sports wear with my ass out like why are you you're not going to do that anymore you just you're like no nah, i'm just gonna eat heaps of junk food <laughs> well, no but like you know when you're competing and shit you're in like literally a bikini and like everyone fucking froths it whereas now i'm gonna be like lifestyle and like eating out and like wearing jeans yeah but show what life and show what your life is man. i know people people will still care i think you we'll see. yeah i think you have you're making a really good a, a really good move with the platform that you have to like talk about this stuff and even though that's not yeah. going to define you by any means you're just explaining what you're I just want to be able to help people because like the way that I f- have felt for like a long time in my career is like not nice and like if anyone feels or can relate to anything I've said like I want to be able to like help and assist and like you know the younger generation just to like relax and like enjoy their life and like you know you don't have to be like anal and like this is the only thing I can do when I'm 16 like it's not like that like you can have a balanced life and be a good athlete and you can talk about this shit because it's like you don't probably don't feel like you have anyone to talk to in that scenario you know you can't talk to me (laughs) like I have no fucking idea (laughs) but (laughs) none of us do that's really what it comes down to Well, thanks so much, man. No, this has been great. You. I'm so glad we got to do it. And mm. yeah, we'll have you on again. I'll be super keen to talk again at some point. Yes. Thank right. you, Liz. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Peace.